Hey babe, didn't you say you have to review Black Christmas 2019? Oh, fuck. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Davey Deathray here with a very special Christmas time movie review. Yeah, about that. The original Black Christmas came out in 1974, and it is a horror classic in the slasher subgenre. For whatever reason though, the film never spawned a franchise, but we have gotten two films since then with the Black Christmas name. This holiday season, I'm gonna be taking a look at all three films in reverse order. That means we're starting with Black Christmas 2019. The film is directed by Sophia Takal, who co-wrote the movie with April Wolf. The story follows a group of sorority girls that find themselves in the crosshairs of a malicious cult led by a fraternity that is hell-bent on making women who don't behave pay the price. The movie stars Imogen Poots, and man, this one is rough top to bottom. First off, we might as well get this out of the way right away. Is this a Black Christmas remake? No. No, it's not. It is a movie that came out in 2019 that is called Black Christmas, and really the only similarity other than that that it shares with the original, or even the other remake from 06, is that it follows the sorority girls. Now, admittedly, I have avoided the film because I saw so many bad reviews on YouTube, written reviews, word of mouth, it just seemed like this movie didn't work for anybody. But I finally watched it for the first time in preparation for this review, and it is bad in so many ways. We're gonna tackle the technical aspect here today because I just feel like the messaging and the politics have been covered so well. But I will say this, they certainly don't work for me. They come off as way too ham-fisted, very over the top, and while the original Black Christmas had some very serious controversial issues in the script, it was just handled really, really well and in more of a real life kind of subtle sort of way. Enough wind up. Let's get into what makes this movie the biggest piece of shit lump of coal you'll ever get in your stocking. Starting with the story, where the hell is the slasher? Why are you calling your movie Black Christmas if it is not a slasher and instead some weird conspiracy cult movie with mysticism and black goo coming out of a statue bust's eyes? And this story is so one-dimensional. It pretty much centers around one issue with the fraternity that leads the cult and the sororities on campus. There are no real layers to this story. I think maybe it would have been more interesting if you're gonna have that cult, maybe also have a slasher. Maybe make it so the slasher isn't just everyone in the cult and it is a mystery and we need to know who that person is within the group or within the story that is going to be unmasked in the end. But no, it's just faceless drones and it culminates in this really weird, out of place, not well earned comic book style battle scene in the fraternity's basement. Oh, it's just so weak all around. Another thing that rubbed me the wrong way as far as the writing goes is as we're leading into the third act of the film, Riley sits there and goes beat for beat over the story. I'm serious, it's this person died, then this person died, then this person. She just tells us everything that's happened up to that point. She's speaking to Chris, but it's like she's reminding us because we've either fallen asleep or lost interest. And then it doesn't even end there. When they get to the frat house and they're in the basement, there are multiple flashbacks that just keep on happening. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. It happens in some movies that I even like where I just think, why are you showing me this flashback? I just saw that five or 10 minutes ago. And when we finally get to the home invasion segment of the film and you figure that the suspense would really ramp up, it doesn't really feel like it goes anywhere because they have to pull back so much due to the PG-13 rating. Now I think PG-13 can definitely work in horror, especially depending on the subgenre, but when you're remaking a slasher like this, even though this isn't technically a slasher, it's a shame to have to pull back in those moments. It just feels cheap and just completely takes the wind out of your sails. Moving on to the acting, these are some of the most awkward, uninspired performances I've ever seen. Of course they're gonna wanna make you feel like these characters are all really great friends, but I don't really feel the chemistry and especially don't feel that chemistry between our main character Riley and her love interest Landon. One of the biggest hurdles for me in the acting department was actually Imogen Poots. 
I know that she is a successful actress, and I've got nothing against her, but it's really clear that she's not American. Especially in the back half of the film when she gets upset or raises her voice, it feels like she's slowly enunciating every little syllable, and it's just very, very clear that that's not her natural accent. To me, it sounds kind of bizarre and just takes me right out of the movie. Other than that, there's really not much to say about the performances. We get some brief bright spots from Lily Donahue as Marty and Brittany O'Grady as Jesse who easily put in the most realistic performances of the whole bunch. But it does little to make up for characters like Elise Shannon's Chris, who is just the buzzword mouthpiece of this film's brand of hyper cynical feminism. Now, I get it. It's not the actor's fault that the writing is just not up to snuff here. They do what they can with what they have to work with, but there just isn't much meat on the bone. Even Carrie Elwes, who is usually pretty charming in his roles, comes off as stiff and he clunkily delivers this terrible dialogue that feels more like satirical comedy and less like a serious examination of gender politics. Now that we've covered the writing and acting a bit, I wanna get into my biggest gripe with this film, which is the way it's shot and edited. This film is downright lazy and amateur when it comes to camera placement, camera movement, and those damn zooms. I swear almost every shot in this film has a push in or a push out. It's like a dynamic zoom effect that I would use on a YouTube video and they're relying on it as if it's the most creative thing you can do in cinema. And I know, I know you may say, but Davey, they're trying to recreate that 70s style that was kind of like that. Okay, fair enough. I feel like the 06 version of Black Christmas does that a lot better. I think you can still use that as a tool, something in your repertoire that you pull out. But to rely on it the way they do in this film, it was completely distracting. It took me out of the movie more than the bad accent. And I was starting to think of, oh my gosh, you could play a drinking game. You'd be hammered within the first 15 minutes. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention the gore. Wait, no I didn't. There's no gore! There's like a little cut on a leg. Maybe you see a body posed, which by the way, is a totally missed opportunity. They reveal a body on the balcony that's frozen. No one knows that this woman has been killed, but there's no musical sting. In fact, talking about another thing that's missing, where is the music in this movie? I swear when the credits came up and it said composed by, I was like, composed by? This movie had music? It was just an overall very unsatisfying experience. A movie that I will definitely not go back to unless I'm doing like a commentary to make fun of it Mystery Science Theater 3000 style. I will say this one thing though, I've got one positive. Awesome title card. And I'm not joking, I love the font they picked for the Black Christmas title. It looks so good, it reminds me of the original 74 classic one of the few things or two things that this film does that reminds me of that movie. And it also kind of reminds me of that time in A Christmas Story, you know, that like 40s, 50s, just that warm Americana, kind of old fashioned Christmas feel. And that's kind of funny because Bob Clark did the original 1974 Black Christmas and A Christmas Story. Other than that, I don't really have much else to say about this movie. Easily forgettable, probably never gonna watch it again. Definitely not gonna make its way into my Christmas rotation. And we'll see with my next review, but it's possible that it even makes people rethink the way they feel about that 06 remake because that was controversial when it came out. I certainly can't recommend this movie unless you just want to put it on for a laugh. Uh, I guess, you know, it's only an hour and 32 minutes, uh, so it's kind of a breeze, albeit a very painful one. That's going to do it for my review of Black Christmas 2019, or as I like to call it, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Kill the Cult. Please leave a like if you enjoyed what you saw here today, and why not hop on over to the channel, check out some of our other videos, throw us a subscribe if you're digging it all. I've got a whole bunch of stuff on there and more to come here at the end of 2023 and into 2024. Jump into the comments section below, let me know what you think of Black Christmas 2019. Am I missing something? Am I way off? Am I just some unreasonable dude? I don't know. Thank you guys so much for coming by. Until next time, I've been and will continue to be Davey Deathray. Take care.